worship the Lord and and, and, it, it, and the worst crimes we can do to the Spirit of God and the presence of the Lord is to go out of this building and don't seal it in our heart, but get into foolish talking and things that don't, they, they just don't matter. And everything that's gone in is going to drain out because you didn't make a platform out of it and build a place for it. It's a building place. When you get a revelation, it's another part of Jesus that you haven't understood nor seen. So he gives it to you. And so I want to, it gives you the understanding. So I want to talk to you just a tiny bit about fasting. You know, it's one of the greatest weapons God has given to the church. That means everybody needs to fast sometimes so, because it empties you out. It opens you to hear the voice of the Lord. Few do it, and that's including everybody. Few fast. They, they just, you know, the, the one thing that's got the Christians today is going shopping or eating. Those two things. So you want to be a people that... Well, let me tell you this. My pastor and her husband together fasted. She did 90 days and he did 110 for their son to get saved. Wow. You say, what kind of fasting? I'll tell you, it wasn't a Daniel fast. I never heard of that until somebody started doing it. The Daniel fast is eating kosher food. If you like it, eat it. That's what a Daniel fast is. And I'll guarantee you, you won't like it too well. Will they, Ruthie? Because they've taken all the things out that you really like. It's wholesome food. That's what the Daniel, they, they refused to eat what the king was eating because it wasn't a good diet. It's not eating a little fruits and vegetables. I'm not contradicting anybody. Fasting means you don't eat food. That's what it means. There's no other way you can see it. But you can eat a little. You can, you can fast a little if you like have diabetes. But I have fasted for almost two days full. And I'm a diabetic. And I don't like to say that. But I trusted God. And I forget all the time, don't I, to take my shots. I just forget. I'm still alive, as you can see. Okay. So what it does, it empties ourselves of ourselves when we fast. It empties ourselves. It takes away, it humbles you. It's called in the Bible, afflicting oneself. Afflict oneself. That means you, you do something that's hard. And it never gets easy. Fasting never gets easy, especially when God tells you around Thanksgiving or Christmas to fast. That happened to me on a long fast once. But my pastors fasted for their son. He was a hard one to catch, and he was in Washington State at a meeting of um, Winshaw's End Time Handmaidings. And the Holy Ghost slayed him on the floor. He ended up underneath the piano for hours in the spirit, praying in tongues. He called home and he said, Mom, Dad, stop fasting. I'm saved. <laughs> but the husband didn't. He went another 20 days. The mother couldn't do anymore. She went 90 days. Now, a lot of times she didn't eat at all or she would eat broth, but that wasn't with seasoning in it. Like you open a can of green beans and you just drink the broth off of it. This man got so glorious saved that from the beginning of his ministry, beginning, I'm talking about right away, he would have one meal on Sunday and fast the rest of the week for one year. Wow. And his father said, what are you fasting for? He said, a healing ministry. He said, how do you know you don't have it? Start laying hands on people. He had a miracle ministry. While he's talking to you, you got healed. Wow. And then he had a prophetic word. It was just different. I don't know how to explain it to you. You wanted to cry when you heard the word coming. He was so broken. You could feel the pain and the suffering of the people through his prophetic words. And you, he would prophesy for three and four hours in many meetings. Just line them all up. And we'd sit there. We'd play music and, and receive because you can receive what you hear and understand. But he never let a person go without a word from the Lord, without direction. Because prophecy makes things happen. It puts things in, puts your soul in order when you're prophesied. It puts things in order in your life because it'll reach into the roots of things that need to be cared for and it will clean them or pull them out. And see, it's, it's not much prophecy today in the church, but I like to hear what the Lord say. I like to know what his report is. Yeah. Yes. I, mean, yeah. what, I heard a few yes. 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 Give him dreams, Lord. Dreams. Yes. 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 He yes. says in Job, I yes. come in the night and I open man's heart. Yes. I open his mind and yes. his spirit. And I tell him things, I'm paraphrasing, that he needs to know to bring his life to order. Yes. 
That's what dreams are for. Yeah. Somebody said you dream because you can't hear. That's not true. Dreams, visions, and revelations are the mysteries of God. That's how we know him and know his heart. And we think we know a whole lot. Oh, we've only touched the end of listen, the tip of the iceberg. But we want to be a person that knows how to fast. So fast a day a week to start out. If you will do this, I'll guarantee you, if you'll take, we did two days a week, 24 hours. It was required if you stayed there because they didn't cook any food. So if you didn't have any money or a car, you didn't get anything to eat. Really, not the babies, but we all fasted on Wednesday and Friday when we went to church. So we'd be open to be sensitive to the spirit, open to hear. And I've told you this before, but it's the plan God gave us. And then we would we would pray 20 minutes before every service. Nobody got to talk and I went in the back room. We'd go to the altar and we'd lift our hands and just sing in the spirit. And then after the altar service, or after Brother Evelyn did what he was going to do, you know, he laid hands on people and gave words and miracles of healing. And then before we went home, we would pray another 20 minutes to seal what we heard in that service that when we got on the bus, we were quiet all the way home. And we didn't lose what God had put in us. Am I making sense to you? We had good training. And you can't get away from it. You think you can? And he comes down to let you know, listen, I have trained you. I have put it in you. And I'm requiring of you to do something with his anointing that I've given unto you. You think, you think God has pulled us out of where we are and moved you and served you with miracles to get you where you are and watched over you from danger and it has an angel babysitting you many times and he's going to leave you like you are. Mm. He loves you too much to leave you like you are. And I was going to tell the story about my brown purse that somebody gave me. So I asked the Lord if I could have a little brown purse. I said, now, Lord, it, it doesn't have to be a designer. The person's in the room that gave it to me, so I won't say who it is. They, I haven't seen them for a while. But I was going to tell it earlier. And I said, now, Lord, I'm not looking for an expensive bag. I just would like a brown purse. I like brown. So the next day, somebody in here came to me, and they had something in the bag, and they just pulled the top out, and they, just like this, like this is the bag. They said, do you like this? And I said, uh, well, I really can't see what it is. <laughs> so she pulled out a little more. I said, oh, it's brown. And it was a duty and burn. I said, I asked the Lord yesterday if I could have a brown purse. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell him I wanted a designer bag. She said, I know what the Lord told me last month to get it to you. <laughs> you don't think God's watching out for you? He knows what you're going to ask before you ask. Before he puts these thoughts in your mind. And he's working on it all the time. But don't get ahead of him. Listen to me. I want to go to the East Coast to visit my family. I've lost Five brothers and sisters. I've lost 19 people through funerals since I've been out here. Death. Wow. I've only been to one, two funerals out of 19 people in my family because the Lord said you're not to go. Wow. You know, I fed them all they, I could give them when they were alive. I took care of them while they were alive. <coughs> but I, because if I go out of the will of the Lord, I don't even want to tell you the things I've suffered. They've been horrible. My suitcase is lost during a whole trip. And somebody gave me a dress that was seven times too big for me, and that's what I wore. I thought, I'd have gone out and bought somebody a dress. Come on, are you love me or not? Do you know what I'm saying? But I wore that dress. It was seven times too big for me. Do everything. I wore it to church and wore it everywhere while I was on the East Coast. They finally got my suitcase to me seven or eight days later. But those kind of things, you know what I'm talking about? And lost things. It wasn't convenient where I was because it was out of the timing of the Lord. When you move in the timing of the Lord, there's increase and goods and blessings upon your life. So one of the things that comes out of fasting is you quickly hear God's voice. You easily hear God's voice. Thank you. You hear his voice. You want something new? we got to give him a new wine skin. we got to give him something new to work with. Can anybody do that? Can somebody close that door? She's trying to. So, flesh always wants to be pampered. Remember that. We don't hear messages on this. Does anybody know what I'm talking yes. about? You know, you go somewhere, and, and uh, we went to India, and we were the star evangelists, and they put us 
in the best beds until monsoon rains came. <laughs> they said, we have to bring the cattle in. I'm not against them. That's their culture. So we slept where the cow slept. Wow. And it was on cow on floors. Wow. And we didn't have anything to really protect us. And we didn't say anything about it. I'm just telling you now. But I heard the voice of the Lord when I was down on that floor. I was glad to hear it anywhere, but I heard it that day. But you want to be a people that permit the inner man to be renewed. You have to do it, honey. That's what fasting does. It, it, it causes you to hear the voice of the Lord. It urges you to read more of the Bible. It really increases your learning, your knowledge, your, your seeking after God. It puts a hunger. See, God's looking for those that are hungry. Hungry! For change in their lives. I don't, Lord, I don't like myself. I don't, they, I don't know where this message comes from. You got to love yourself. And I don't like anything about myself. If it's not anointed and it's not. Sanctified. I don't. I don't want. When I get upset and say the wrong thing. I thought, oh, I got to go around this mountain again. It's not a good thought. But you want to be to the place where you don't want to do that. It's not in you. That's called the spirit of death. It's not in you to say ugly things or curse words or, or be unkind to people. Something there that needs a little more testing and fasting. And then it won't be there anymore. And you'll have miracles on top of miracles. Okay? So it's day by day. And so you, you want to get that freshness and you want that newness in your spirit is to be crucified. It's all in the cross. And few people preach on it today. And the Bible tells us in 714 of Matthew that few find that path. I'm going to harp on this until you get it. God gave, God gave me a vision the other day about some big pastors. And I don't like saying this, but if you'll understand what I'm saying. We all think we're perfect. Until God just slips a little scale back. But the scripture says in Matthew that few find the righteous door. You know what that means? It means it's narrow. It means it's only room for you and Jesus. And that's where you will profit with the Lord in ways that will astound you. Because you see, it's, it's righteousness. When he says few find it, he's not talking about going to heaven or hell. He's talking about the church needs to know right standing with God. Right standing. What, what is good unto God? What is good? It doesn't have to be a great big thing. You don't have to fast 90 days. But it might be a big thing you got to believe for. And it will take that. A lot of devils you got to fight. But you want to be a person that it's all in the cross. See, this is what's redeemed Jimmy Swagger. Yeah. He has preached on the cross and has redeemed him. Yeah. And nobody else is preaching on it. And your whole life and everything that God does for you is because he went to the cross. And he suffered, which you didn't have to suffer. But when he said, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Now listen, this is what it means. A lot of people don't believe, they don't understand what it means. It means if you'll be willing to wait with him, no matter how long it is and how you're burning to have it. If you will wait with him, you will have it and you will reign with him. Even if you have to be like Caleb at 85 years of age. David was king of Israel, but he really wasn't ruling. You know, Saul tormented that man for years and years and years, but he was the king. And he had to go through that. But see, he was Jesus talks about David all through the word, not Saul. Going to rule on King David's throne. Isn't that wonderful? So Paul says, who said this? Oh, that I might know him. Oh, you want to know him. Oh, I'll die for you, Lord. You know, Paul, when he went to Asia, and everyone, when he met, you know what he said again and again? He said, thank God that I pray in tongues more than ye all. I fast more than ye all. Because he saw the burden of birthing the church. See the burden of birthing some people. Listen, some of you have got sons that are not coming to God. You're going to have to make a greater sacrifice to see them come. you got daughters that are not coming. They're harder. Do something that they will move. They will feel like the hand of the Lord just pushing them out of their hideaway or their getaway. This far and no further. I have a brother. David is his name. I had a dream about him the other night. 
I almost stopped praying for him. He's 77 years old. My mother stood in many courts with him when he was a young boy, crying, that didn't know what to do with him. And he used to love to sing. And when I would stay with him, the Lord said one day to me, listen to his song and you'll know what's in his spirit. That's what the Lord said to me. Because he sung all the time. And a lot of his songs, and I didn't want to be in his sight, I'd hide. But one, I would listen to see if I could approach him by his song. I heard him singing about two weeks ago. And he got to a place in his song that he stopped because he didn't know where to go. It was that he was at a dead end. He couldn't go any further. And then he saw Jesus and his song changed. I saw that. I was so happy. Honey, I'm, I'm making salmon cakes. And I'm patting them salmon cakes. Like, I'm patting my brothers. I'm telling Everything I did, it was under God. Everything. I was singing unto the Lord. I had strength I didn't know I had. I saw him twice in the dream. He stopped. He was singing, but then his song stopped. He couldn't go any further with that song. God was giving him a new song. Are you listening? A new song. And make a sacrifice and say, Lord, I want my sons and daughters to come in. This is for them. This is that that Peter talked about. Just a little more. And then your heart will become an arena where God can work when you fast. He'll do many things over one fast. When Brother Heflin got saved, their mother and father shouted for days. That man came on the scene, and he went to Australia, true story. There's eight states there. He took one state by himself. And his tambourine and his prophetic word, they told me that when I went there 30 years later. You know this man? He came here fasting and took this state with his anointing by himself. Everybody knew him. Because he had a word in his mouth, honey, that was running like a train. I'm telling you, it was running all, and it's a big state. We're talking about it's as big as, uh, uh, it would cover Nevada, Colorado, New Mexico, half of California, and Arizona. That much territory. And they remember him. And they said, how will we know you when you get here? He came across on a plane, a train all the way from the west coast of Australia. He said, You'll know him. He was the only man that got off the train with a hat and a suit on and a tambourine and the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a man of God. He began to prophesy. Doors began to open everywhere. And he was going back and forth across Australia. Back and forth, up and down. Like Clark Taylor. Clark Taylor was a cow puncher. <clears throat> he could be put the people that he trained up to be pastors, I think, on a seven day fast. He gave him five hundred dollars. He trained him for six weeks. So you got a seven-day fast, $500 in six weeks. That's five, six, and seven. I just thought about that. He said, now go start a church and don't come back if you don't make it. He has 89 churches in Australia. 89. That he trained. He gave them hard training. How to be a true soldier of the cross. But it'll come from fasting. Fasting. Listen. You will leap over others. You'll leap over others that you know by fasting. You'll go much further. God will take you into great places that others haven't made because they weren't willing to make that sacrifice. Sometimes we delay our future by being too slow in our past. But if you if you want to see it, now I know what I'm talking about because I was in a nation. I was saved eight months and I heard the Lord say, go to Panama. And I immediately, and now this doesn't seem like very long from some of the fast. I went on a 14-day fast, hardly any coffee or anything. 14 days to go to Panama. I had no contacts. I didn't know anybody. I had two visions, three visions of what the land, the church, and standing in the airport by myself. That's all I had. I saw the color of the church on the inside. I saw the air, standing in the airport alone, and I saw that the land was very green. When I arrived, that's what it looked like. I didn't have a contact, but when I'm standing there, Someone spoke perfect English and said, can I help you from behind me? And when they said that, God gave me a name. It was nine of them in the telephone directory. I told you the story. Which one is it? Well, if you want to be safe, look for a Christian name. So there's one called Jacob. That's the one. And it was. They helped me. They took me to where I was to go. I was where I was to be in two hours after I got off that plane. In the church. God had already spoken to the church and I was coming. Come on. Wow. But that fast thing did it. I don't believe. I believe I'd have been searching for days trying to find my destination if I hadn't prepared with fasting. So it'll cause you to to be to increase 
your health will increase. I mean, your health will really increase if you fast in tremendous ways. And suddenly, listen, things that have been hidden in us that we didn't know about will surface when you begin to fast. The first thing that will happen is that um, things in our body, you might have all kinds of, you know, things that we need to cleanse our body of, and we didn't, it'll surface. It'll come out on your skin. I turned black on my first seven, first 21 days of water fast. My face turned black. And my pastor said, you need to get off that fast. I said, oh, but I feel wonderful. I did, I was working in the kitchen. I feel wonderful. I said, really, I don't have a pain. But the Lord did speak to me. He said, on your 13th day, it will be the worst. He didn't tell me anything else, honey. He didn't tell me it helped me. He just said, he let me, listen, it was horrible. It was like somebody was cutting a hunk of my flesh out with a knife. The pain was awful. And I was looking for some way to get rid of the pain. I didn't have a nickel for any pain medicine. I didn't have any insurance. And you can't believe I would lay on the floor and put my feet on the walls or at the top of the bed and hang my head over the bed. And I, I did flip-flops and everything else you can think of to get rid of the pain. And I, this will help you, and I don't think it's wrong. I got a heating pad and put it on the pain, and it lifted. Because my body was starving. My body was crying out. Give me something to eat. Feed me, feed me, feed me. But on that, on those uh, days, God did great things, and I, was, I traveled the nations, went all over the world, and around the world four times, plus 75 other nations. I've never borrowed money from a bank. I've never, I don't know that I've ever put a trip on a ticket, on a credit card that God hasn't given it back to me if I did. I haven't spent any money on any of my trips. I haven't had to ask anybody to help me. God has spoken to them to bless me. Because if you do it God's way, it's the highest way. So I'm encouraging you today. Start with one meal. Are you going to have pain? Yes, you are. I'll just speak it out to you. I've thrown up more than once trying to get past that moment, you know. Horrible moment. And then after you ate, it was worse. Because God's trying to give you something new. Something new. Something different. Something in direction. Some understanding and revelation. What fasting will do, it'll change personality. It'll change your neighbors. It'll change your neighborhood. It'll change your family. It'll change your pastor. I ain't been praying for your pastor to change. Yeah, and then you get out on the floor and the Lord says, why don't you change? That's what he said to me. I lived in a house with a woman and it wasn't good, but I'm not going to talk about it. It worked me over with sandpaper. And I said, oh, Lord, change her, change her, change her. Please change her, Lord. I can't stay in this house another minute. I was paying her rent. And he waited after two hours. Two hours. He said, why don't you change? <laughs> and I waited another two hours. Okay. <laughs> really? Four hours. This woman had an invalid husband. And she had to leave him at home. And God put me in the house to help her. I worked a job also. Got her grass. Cooked her food. Washed her hair. Fixed her hair. Washed her clothes. I'm just telling you. I'm not bragging on myself. It was there for me to see what I was going to do with it. She couldn't do anything. She had to hire someone. And I ended up cleaning her house, cooking her Sunday meal, and making her, what do you call those, carrot cakes that she loved. I mean, God makes you fall in love with these things when you start fasting. Because he's making character. He's making an anointing. Amen? I see, I see, hey, Mrs. Your husband, I see your little girl back there, she's saying yes. Your little one, she's doing this, yes. Yes, you want to fast a meal? I had my nephews, 9 and 10, or 10 and 12, we're going to fast. They didn't know any different. They didn't know any better. And I got them to fast three days on water. Oh, wow. On Ruth. Can't make this. I took my hand and held them up on the wall. I was terrible. I said, yes, you can. They were about to faint. I got to have some meat. No, come on. You can do it. It's just three days. They're on water. They were the tyrants of the neighborhood, brother. There was four of them here. Listen, they saw Jesus dripped in a sapphire blue robe with a gold cord, and Jesus began to speak to them about their calling in life. Woo! On those three days of fasting. Hallelujah. They, have not, they got away from God. Their mother died that year, and they, I left, and there's nobody to teach them. 
but I'm calling in my prayers now. Come on. This is what you do when you fast. You call in your prayers. You call in your prayers and watch God. Watch God. Are you listening to me? They've never been into drugs and they're into drinking. That doesn't mean they're precious, but it means they didn't do it. But I just kept believing and praying and praying and believing. And their mother was gone. They were almost helpless. And God began to do things for them to keep them because one of them really loved his mother so much. But I'll never forget Jeffrey. I said, Jeffrey, you can do it. And he, then he told me a whole vision. I just come from Panama. A whole vision of what I've done in Panama. Wow. Ten years old. Don't you wish the whole church could come into that? Wow. I realize that's an exceptional. And I, I realize I, I never told him it was wrong for me to do that. I shouldn't have made him pass on water. But I figured it would straighten him out real quick. And I would have to be tormented any longer. I was there on a moment for the Lord. The Lord said to me, he said, I want you to go to Texas. I thought, I haven't left anything in Texas. I knew the furnace set was there. You understand? And then, then my mother told me, she said, why don't you go visit your brother? Well, he wasn't in a place that I wanted to visit him. But then he called me. And he never calls anybody to come and see him. He doesn't. He said, I'll pay your way if you come out here. I thought, oh, God, he's on the throne. <laughs> I prayed he would forget. Listen to me. I really prayed. I prayed hard. I, was, I said, call me back in seven days. And he didn't know I was saved. I said, I, I just said, I said, I need for the Lord to help me. He said, well, don't let everybody else discourage you from coming out here. And Chris, I didn't know I would hear from him again. I'm telling you. It was a nightmare for six months. You know, Esther had six day, six months of cleaning, and you know those those other six months of other things that they don't talk about. Well, those are those other things that you don't talk about. These are the things that shape you, make you believe for great things in God, makes you reach out and receive great things in God. Are you listening to me? Things that's unheard of and people never talk about. They never talk about these great things. They tell you about all this prosperity and what God wants to do, yeah. but they got to tell you how to get there. Are you yeah. listening? You've yeah. got to tell. Or they get disappointed. Yeah. They give up. Yeah. But you got to. You've got to. You've got to let the Lord prepare the way. It's by fasting and praying and sacrifice and doing without. You said, "Well, does God do that?" He certainly does, but a lot of people don't believe it. They don't believe it. He said, "His own rejected Him." Why did we think that we're not going to be rejected? Amen. They didn't look right at me. They didn't. Listen, we used to have to go to church and make it a point of speaking to everybody coming in because they got a report from the pastor. They went to the pastor and said, Sister so and so didn't speak to us today. So he takes us in a room and we all get talked to. Now, listen, these are tithers. These are good people in the church. And I want you to make a point of speaking to them when you go in. Well, honey, we're running a last minute race to get to church. Who has time? You know, we're on a bus. There's a whole crowd of us together. We barely get in the door before. But we take time. How are you? How are you? How are you? And then they wanted us to take care of their children while they went on trips to Israel. And some of us, they wanted them, Cheryl, to paint their house and do their wallpaper. Yes. That's what we did for people so they could go to Israel. Wow. We go take care of their whole household so they could go. You think God doesn't forget those things? No, He doesn't. He doesn't. I babysat in a whole family for six weeks. Five children, one was still on the bottle. Missed his mother. He cried night and day. You got a story like that every day in your life. You understand what I'm saying? Do you know Jesus? How does Jesus feel when he has to listen to all the sob stories of people when they're upset? Have you ever thought about that? Well, they didn't do that. They don't like me. And I heard the Lord say, well, he said that to me one day. Well, <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> Fasting. Is an art. It's an art. It will quiet down your personalities. It will change our behavior patterns. It will change our thinking. It will increase our learning of the Lord and how he operates. It will cause us to do things we've never wanted to do before. Are you listening to me? Some people get upset if they can't have them. Come on. They don't have that seat they sit in all the time. You're not taking it to the cemetery with you. Oh, will you? Yeah. Don't let it bother you now. I'm just telling you. Sometimes I don't feel like I'm at home here. Did you know that? Amen. I, I said everywhere in the church. Some of you don't know that. I'm just telling you. 
I'm a leader in this church. I know that I am. I know what I am. Or I wouldn't stay here. But, you know, wherever the seat is, if you were sitting here, Sister Ruth, so I'm, I'm over here one day, and I'm over here. Then they set me behind, what's the brother's name from Sacramento? Right behind him and Pastor Maiden. That one has the church up near Sacramento. Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson. Set me right behind him. Are you listening? Everybody listening to me right now? Yeah. I don't do high fives. I don't like them. I don't like them. I think it's nonsense. Yeah. I'll do it once in a while. I can't imagine Jesus saying, give me a high five, but he might do it to win some. <laughs> So anyway, we're singing in the spirit, and an anointing came up on my voice. It was just nice. And he turned around like this. That's what he did. He turned up there like this. So then when they said later, high five the people around you, he didn't. He took his hand out like this to me. You understand? He caught the message. He caught the ripper. He caught the anointing was there. Why am I telling you this? Because these are the little foxes that snares a lot of meetings, and we don't know it. I've seen the spirit come in just like this, and it took a turn more than once because somebody sang the wrong song or they said the wrong thing. You say, why are we telling you this? Because this is how we miss a lot of the glory. We, we don't recognize it in honor when the presence of the Lord comes. Kings require honor. Queens require honor. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference in our personality suddenly. And we we change to that adoration, that awe, that beauty of who the Lord is. Did anybody have any visions like that this morning of the Lord? I saw the Lord was dressed in the American flag. That's a beautiful vision. He's working. Nobody had any vision, I'll give you to dance around the room three or four more times. <laughs> Anybody come, come and share your vision. She's got a whole book. I had some running things here going on. Uh, when Sister Ruth was talking about, she was sharing, um, about uh, Ruth Heflin's Harvest book. Okay, she was talking about Revelation is for everyone and uh, what does the Lord want from us? And what I got was He wants more of us. This is for today. Also, what I saw was when we were talking about the money, I saw gold coins falling. The gold coins were like gold coins. And I saw bags of money, you know, you've seen uh, like Wells Fargo or some of these big big banks and they have like these uh, what's that material where it, it's like a bag. Burlap. Burlap, yeah. I saw burlap bags with dollar signs on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also I saw God's hand like a vice on our head, like keeping our head straight ahead, yes. not turning to the right or turning to the left. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow, it sounds like wealth for the kingdom. Listen, yes. it's for the kingdom. It's not for a new car yes. or a new house. It's for the kingdom of God. Hey Amen. I, uh, I saw, uh, and I, I, it pertains to somebody here, I saw a, a bulldog. And he was sitting and, and real stern and he was growling and showing his teeth and the Holy Spirit telling me there's somebody here that's been having a lot of fear about where they live. There's somebody breaking in their house and the Holy Spirit says, I'm there to guard you. You don't need to worry. I'll be that watchdog and I'll watch out. And then I saw also while we were dancing, you know, I saw how that God was opening wells. And out of these wells came a jewels, flowers, all kinds of things were coming out of the wells as we were opening up new wells, we're singing and praising him. And also, uh, I want to share a little testimony. We were praying for you people, some of you people for your uh, uh, houses to get fixed. My wife and I were standing in a prayer line. We were praying for people at our church one day and one couple came up and said, 
we have been tithing and doing everything, but we don't have any money. We need a new roof. I said, that's easy. I said, God said he'd take care of your needs. That's a need, so we'll just believe with you. And we did. They came back about a month later and said, we got a new roof. <laughs> yeah, believe God. Don't yeah. look at anybody that has money or, or you know, yeah. they know how to help you. Know, look to God because you'll be happy in the end. Yes. Um, well, during the dancing, I just I saw lots of colors, a, f a flurry, um, billowing, um, moving colors, beautiful colors. But um, kind of in sharing a little something else, is that um, have you noticed that when you come here, that everything she's saying, you just experience within 24, 48 hours. And, it, and it's like <clears throat> when she was talking about um, answering her prayer, different things like this. Day before yesterday, when I went to the mailbox, I said, Lord, I really, really need to get some money in the mail. It would be really nice if you could send me some money in the mail. That was day before yesterday. Yesterday, when I opened up the mail, I got a, um, a check. To me, it's a big check. Maybe to somebody else would be real tiny. But um, I have something about escrow and overpaid and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Anyway, but we really needed it. And so it was, and I just asked the day before, you know, it would be nice to get some money in the mail. And so, um, and then the other thing is that, do you notice that we know things and we say things without knowing what we're saying? Yes. yes. My daughter just went to Nashville and I told her um, <clears throat> the night before she left, I said, you know, you need to prepare yourself because these certain kinds of things could happen. And I named a bunch of different things. I got a call from her that night and she said, she said, this is a, f this flight I'm on, this is a flight from from, you know what that word is. <laughs> I don't even like to say it. H, E, double. <laughs> okay. And so she started telling me everything was happening, and it was everything I had told her the night before. And so um, he prepares you to to know what to do. And then she says, and then they then the, for the car they took all this money, which was all my food money. So now I have no food money. And I, you know, and. and I almost laughed and I said, well, if I didn't say it, because I didn't want to get mad at me, but I almost said, what, you fast, <laughs> but I didn't say it. But anyway, we worked that out, so that's, that's going to be covered. But, but God is showing us uh, all along the way. And then she opened up with this song about Song of Solomon. Well, this morning before my husband went to work, both of us were talking about the Song of Solomon for a very lengthy time this morning. And then, then she sang this, so I can't wait to bring this song home to him. So it, it, have you noticed? Yeah, it, 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 yeah it's, it's like, it's just so awesome. And God is so wonderful. And he's so, he's now he's, he's, he's even honing in on things. Like, like he was talking to me, um, and we were talking a little bit about the hearts. God was sharing with me that I had to repent of things where I didn't do anything wrong in this natural world. I mean, for instance, I'll give you one instance. And there's lots, but I'll just give you one. When I took a flight one time, a long time ago, someone sat next to me that took their seat in half of mine. So for several hours, I was like on half a seat. And um, in my heart, I was like, you know, I wish I could sit in my whole seat. But I was so um, friendly and open and wonderful and, and, and encouraging to this person. And they said at the end of the flight, they said, I'm so glad I sat next to you because I feel it just made my flight so good, so wonderful. So they thought I was wonderful. But God told me it wasn't wonderful because my heart wasn't right. And what he, what he wants is not us to be nice to people and loving to people. He wants it to be our hearts clean before people. And so he's, he's really right now kind of narrowing in on everything. So um, God is just so wonderful and he loves us so much that, that he wants to purify everything. Yeah. He's getting us ready. Yeah. We're checking the list and making it, checking it twice. Was it making the list and checking it twice? We're going to find out who's naughty or nice. Sing that song. This is we're gonna have snow in Phoenix. Yes. We're, that means great notable signs and wonders and miracles are coming. Yes. That's the word of the Lord. That when it snow here, great miracles, notable 
miracles are going to come. And I know some of you need them and you won't even be able to explain it. Yes, hallelujah. Just wanted to share real quickly. Um, I had a dream last night, and I know the last time when she was gone and I, I got to minister and, and the Lord gave me that dream for the congregation, but it kind of goes with what Jerry was saying um, regarding that person who I don't know. But the dream was there was this guy, it was like we were in condos and I was across the way and there was this man and he had this gun, I'll just say an AR-15, I don't know what it was, you know, it was just very rapid shooting and he was shooting people. And so my husband and me, we were, we were, we were talking, let's get out of here before he comes over here. So we're running around, it was like an apartment, not a house. We're running around the apartment and I go to turn around and the guy's standing right there. And of course, you know, fear automatically strikes you. And But the, the <clears throat> peace of the Lord came upon me, it was like a cloak. It just fell on me and I looked at that man and he looked at me and he was shocked because I wasn't shocked. And so we, I actually got to minister to him. The end of the story is, you know, it, it turned out okay. But for whoever that was, you know, the Lord is always with us. And you have experienced his presence. And I experienced his presence in my dream. It was so real. Ooh. Yeah, I had a dream. I suppose it's been almost two weeks ago. And I thought it was just for my family. I was here last week, and it just kept coming to my mind. And I said, well, Lord, you know, that's for my family. Everybody in the dream was my family. He kind of let me know, you are family. And uh, it just kept coming to my mind again this morning, so I guess I'll share it. But um, in this dream... Jerry was uh, standing on a by a riverbank. He's my husband, Jerry, and um, he had a long rope, and he obviously had it secured, fastened to something behind him. I didn't see what he had it fastened to, and then he was in the process of tying a buoy, you know, flotation thing on the other end. The thing is, he's standing by this riverbank that really doesn't have any water in it, kind of like. The river's down here, <laughs> and uh, I have to laugh at calling them rivers, but anyway, they just look like big old gullies to me, And but he was, uh, he was ready, and you could tell he was expecting something, and the next thing you know, the riverbed starts to fill up, and then it's flowing really fast, and there's stuff in the river, so it's kind of dangerous if you're in that river, because it's... It's not just water, it's got a bunch of junk in it, trees and stuff. Well, the first thing he sees is a woman and three children, and they are hanging for dear life onto a door, a float, you know, doors floating. And he knows he can't just throw them the buoy because they've got to hang onto this door, you know, they can't just hope they catch it. So he has to go in with the buoy, and, you know, he's got it tied to a rope, but he gets them up and out of the river. And at this time, I'm just driving up in our car, and I get the people, and I put them in the car, and I take them home. Well, as I'm driving home, my oldest daughter is coming towards the river in her car, and it's obvious she's going to get the next load of people. And I'm dropping off these three, or these four people, the, the woman and the three kids, and my daughter's starting to prepare food for them and find clothing for them and so I leave those four people with her and I'm driving back towards the river where Jerry is and the, the other daughter's driving back home with her people and we're, we're doing this until finally we've got eight people you know the woman the three kids and four young men they're, they're youngish men too but they needed help and it's pretty obvious they'd lost everything wherever this flood was coming from, it had washed them out and they didn't have anything. So I knew in my dream that they are going to be staying with us for a while and that 
our whole valley was in desperate need of people that would take in those who had just lost everything and their life was spared but they'd lost, they'd lost everything. And uh, I realized then you're living in this valley, God's getting ready to do something here and he needs everybody to be available to help because when that river comes if you're not knowing how to swim in the river water's destructive if you don't it, it's like I know I had a dream number of years ago where these huge waves were coming in and if you didn't know how to ride the wave you were going to really get a wipe out a lot in that dream wow. it's like a it's going to be a move of God I heard these words rescue the perishing and a move of God if we don't know and brother Lawrence said this you have to know how to operate in the glory realm it's not like your regular church service you have to know how to ride those waves and they say only about 40 people in the whole world know how to surf really yeah. surf and most of them come from Australia they have a great move of God right now. But I'm more aware of that every day that God is in the midst of us and greatly and right early, but we don't know it many times. We're not aware that the Spirit is here and He's trying to reveal something greater than what we're sharing or what we're seeing. Because there's been, I've heard, I've seen these little skips and moves. I don't usually laugh unless there's really something moving in the Spirit. I've laughed a lot this morning. I mean, it's just been all over me. <laughs> But that whole dream is descriptive of how it is right now. Many people will miss a move of God because they don't know how to respond to what the Spirit is doing. They won't know about it in the church. We need to have people, after we worship the Lord, we need two or three prophecies for somebody to suddenly say, Thus saith the Lord, to take, it, to take the service into another direction. Take it to where... It will suddenly answer probably 20 people in this room who have been thinking about something. And it will come out that person's prophecy. Because God is interested in every heart. And we're in unity. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. We, I mean, we're just getting a few drops of rain here. But God wants us to get excited about him. Now, I'm not saying let flesh work. I'm saying if you really love something, you don't care what you look like. When a woman's having the baby, she can go with every hair in place. Oh, but until that baby comes. Man, the hair is all over the head. She's like a wild woman. She's bringing forth life. And God wants us to bring it forth in every service. Get a hold of the Word of God. Study prophecy. Study the Spirit. Begin to declare over people around you. I was at Jack Hafer's church, and I said, Lord, I'm sitting amongst these people. They're, they are of a different character here. Give me a word for somebody. I gave it to a man. Listen to this. We walk out of the church together. He's trying to get away from me. We end up at the same door. When we get out of the parking lot, here we are again beside each other. His car is parked next to where my car is parked. And he's looking at me like this all the way. I don't know exactly everything I told him, but I know it touched his heart, touched his spirit. But Paul said to Timothy, lay your hands on the people and stir up the gift inside of you. And Give direction to these people because it's for perfecting. It's for taking us into a new place. It's for releasing the wisdom of God in the church service. It's for changing. That's why I love it because you don't stay in the valley very long. You get on the mountain when prophecy starts moving. You understand what God is doing in that place. You understand that whole message that preacher is trying to speak to those people. And they don't often give it all because they're afraid of hurting the people. God's going to save all the pieces. Don't worry. You'll get broken a little bit, but he knows how to put the pot back together, okay? But it takes that. It takes those shakings many times. He told me that was something I went through recently, and I was getting on a plane to come home from somewhere. When I heard this word, I knew my life was changing. There was nothing I could do about it. I heard this part of Humpty Dumpty, and all the king's horses and all the king's men could never put Humpty Dumpty together again. And I knew there was nothing nothing I could do to change the situation. The die had been cast. I knew that. And so you don't struggle with it. You don't fight it. You're not hurt. You're not. And when they're giving this word about people, and some of you are fearful of losing your home or not having a place to live, or maybe you can't pay your bills, 
don't worry, it's warm enough that you'll be safe out of here. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Don't take on troubles that you don't have to. Somehow, God has an angel. He's, he'll give you a word 10 years ago, and he watches over it till it's appointed time, and you forgot about it, but he didn't. I've been that place, and I thought, what am I doing here? And I remembered God spoke a word to me. I was going somewhere. At a certain time, it was a year before, you're going out on December the 9th, and somebody asked me on December the 8th, would you like to go to the Dominican Republic? I said, when? They said, tomorrow, December the 9th. I'm just there visiting, attending this funeral 125 miles from my house. But the Lord had said to me, pack a suitcase before I went. But he didn't tell me what to put in it. So I, somebody came in my room while I was gone and laid a skirt on the tip bed. It was for going to some place where it was hot. So I put it in. All I had was a skirt and a pair of shoes and my essentials, and the suitcase was that big. That's all he said to me. I forgot about when he told me, he said, you're going out on December the 9th. A year before that. Wow. Well, the funeral was December the 8th. While I'm there, this man and his wife put their head in the car. How would you like to go to the Dominican Republic with us? I said, when? Tomorrow, December the 9th. Do you know why the Lord put all those dates in there? Because the Lord had told my mother a year before to go with me, and she said no, and she died. And she would have been there on her birthday, December the 10th. God worked all this to help me get there, but I forgot about it, but he didn't. I'm just telling you, you don't know the details God works out for you. You have no idea what he has moved to bring you where you are, to connect you with the people you're with, to get you involved with things that you didn't want. And not talking myself to. You understand? I could pluck Steve and Lori's last nerve if I wanted to. I could just require things of them because they said they'd like to help me. Okay, you want to help me? Okay. Would you do this? I call them up. Would you do that? Could you take care of this? Then he got to the where they were whirling people everywhere and there's no gas coming in. It's all their money. That's all right. God's going to return with great favor. Yes. Amen. Okay? Amen. Amen. I didn't want to say this, but the Lord told me to come up and ask Sister Ruth at least five times. It's like I'm waking up like, what is Sister Ruth doing here? And it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's like, and then when I get awake, you're not there. And I keep thinking, well, Maybe she wants me to do something or pray something. Or, or you yeah. awake in the middle of the night praying at 3 o'clock. You are, aren't you? I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, I wake up a lot in the night, and I know... I know I'm awakening for a purpose to pray. Do I thank you for coming, but I wish I understood. Appeared to you in your dreams? Well, I mean, you're just there. It's like I'm waking up, and it's like, oh, that's rude. What are you doing here? I pray a lot for you, Martha. Oh, well, thank you. Okay, well, that's good. But I mean, you know. You know, she goes on suicide watches all the time, and I mean that kindly. I get up from the Lord this she, loves, she goes out in the hot sun, won't ride the bus in the hot days. You see her everywhere walking, and I fear for her many times when she's out because of her age and her health. And I thought they're going to call me one day and tell me she's fainted. Well, she did. And her daughter got a hold of her to help her. But then I had a dream, and in the dream she said, see, God doesn't want us to worry about anything. He wants us to know the truth, that, that we can move with him. We are watchmen. That means we're responsible for people. And so I'm talking to God about her, and she said, I've been appearing to her, because I've been talking to God about her. I said, Lord, where's Martha? How is she? And uh, I just know things that you don't know. So... One day, I had I had a dream. I think she fell somewhere, and her daughter found out about it and went and got her. But in the dream, she was saying to Michelle, no, to the Lord, she was saying, Lord, please call Sister Ruth that I'm on the streets because I'm looking for souls. And I saw that. She's real. I saw she was very real. She's very clean in her life. I saw this. But she had this, this electric wire coming down and it had static in it in your head. I mean, it meant you were bothered about something. That's what it means. But otherwise, her life was righteous. See, that you want that report. That's what you want. If anybody says anything, you're righteous. Ruth Heflin appeared to me twice. She's appeared to me six times since she died 20 years ago, 18 years ago. And she said to me on two occasions, if you have anything to say about me, say only the good. I 
I sum up my case. God wants us to be, to know each other, to love each other. And you really know you love people when they get on your nerves. You're not listening. <laughs> Nobody gets on anybody's nerves in this room? Come on, be honest. <laughs> Pluck my last nerve. Oh, i got to fast some more. i got to pray some more. You want to get to the place where it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother you if the sky sinks in. It doesn't matter. God is in control. Yeah. Amen. 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 What she just said, the dream you had about what's coming and he's preparing for the people, I was going to ask, uh, we're doing on the streets, rescuing the people. And there's something coming. They're taking cast out of here to Avondale. And so there's a lot of people asking for help. They've raised the rent so high that there's people that go to work every day, but they're living out of their cars uh, on the street downtown. <coughs> so if anybody wants to be a part of helping in any way, we've uh, gotten together. We're cooking for them for Thanksgiving, and we're doing all the trimmings, everything, and we're going to take home-cooked meals to them. We're going to meet on 15th and Van Buren. We're giving hot chocolate. We're giving a home-cooked meal. We're giving prayer in Jesus Christ. So we're preparing for what's coming because of all the people moving here, a lot of people are now on the street. They can't afford it. Uh, so it's just amazing what we're seeing out there. They're, they're packing in. And now with the moving cast away, people will have no place to go. So uh, I'm going to go down uh, to Jefferson and 11 on tomorrow morning. We're going to meet there at 8, and we're going to be praying over that area for God to make a way out of nowhere. Because he's a great big God, and he can do what we can't do. So if you have a heart to pray for those that are less fortunate, that are now homeless, uh, there's elderly down there that's homeless, and just the care takes care of the elderly, but anybody under elderly age, they don't help them. So I've been there every Saturday. I thank Jerry for coming. It was awesome. He was able to minister to a, a, a Muslim from Iraq. And if you guys want to come and help or donate, I thank you for everybody that has donated. Thank you so much because it has made a difference. And I go as God takes me. Whatever he gives me, I'm there. Whether he gives me nothing but a water, a cup of water and prayer, I'm there. So we're going to be on 11th and Jefferson now because the sheriff's moved me. I've been there two years on... Um, 225 Madison on, on uh, 10th in Madison, but now I have to go to the corner of 11th and Jefferson. But no matter where they move me, I'll still be there because people have received Jesus Christ. And I don't know if that will be their last day, but if it is, I know where you're going. So if you have a heart, or God's leading you, then you can come and be of help. We're his hands and feet on the earth, and we show God's love. And I thank you for everybody that shared, and I thank her so much for what she said because I was fasting. I did a three-day dry with nothing because I need to move now. So every Friday I'm fasting and praying for the street because Saturday I'm there, and I give whatever I have. So my dream was Gabriel, and I finally understand the table because I saw this table in the dream, and she just mentioned beans. In the dream, it was a small cup of beans, and I was serving people as they came in the door. And I was scooping out of this little bowls. And they were saying hello to Wilbur. And Wilbur had a gift on his back that was wrapped in satin, I told it before. But today I sat here and he was saying this was the table. The little cups of beans that she's talking about yeah. is what we've been giving to the people what we have. Just giving out of what we have. So I thank God because he said no. He spoke to me without speaking with his mouth. I am Gabriel. So for months, I kept trying, weeks, I kept trying to figure out what are you telling me to do. I just wanted to know the message. You're a messenger. What is the message? But somebody told me, you're missing it. Just be so awesome that you thank God that Gabriel himself came to you. Because there's only a few times he came in the Bible. And he came to you and it was like I sat there and wept and said, God, please forgive me. Because I don't want to dishonor that you sent Gabriel to me. And I just still didn't understand the, this table. And every time I come here, I look, I said, that wasn't a dream. It doesn't make any sense. 
So today he said, yeah, the beans. You hear her about the beans? I'm like, yeah. It's like because they've been here giving for the go to the street. And I thank God. I thank God for you all, for all your help. Thank you so much, and may God bless you richly for it. Amen.